Welcome back guys, it's Lana, and today we're going to be talking about the variational quantum eigensolver. So quantum computing has gained a lot of traction recently, and this is because it holds so much promise for the future. Unfortunately for us though, we're still in the noisy intermediate scale quantum computing era, or NISC era, which essentially means nothing really works. Yet. To compensate for the fact that quantum computers aren't perfect yet, researchers started developing algorithms that rely on both quantum and classical parts to solve problems. This domain is called quantum machine learning. One of the hottest quantum machine learning algorithms right now is the variational quantum eigensolver. This is because its applications range all the way from finance to chemistry. So today we're going to be looking at a specific application of the variational quantum eigensolver in chemistry. One of the most important characteristics of molecules is its ground state energy. See, the ground state energy is just the lowest possible energy state that a molecule can be in. The ground state energy of a molecule is really important because its ground state gives us more information about the electron configuration of that molecule. This can help us simulate molecules in the future. Now that we know that variational quantum eigensolvers are useful, let's take a look behind the scenes and see what's going on underneath. The whole point of the variational quantum eigensolver is to find the lowest possible eigenvalue of a given Hermitian matrix. The entire reason variational quantum eigensolvers work is thanks to something called the variational method or variational principle. The variational principle states that for a given Hermitian matrix H, its expectation value must always be equal to or greater than the lowest possible eigenvalue. That means if we just keep minimizing that expectation value, we only get closer and closer to the minimum eigenvalue of that matrix, never below it. Now the cool thing is, we can actually model a Hamiltonian of a given molecular system using a Hermitian matrix. That means solving for the lowest possible eigenvalue actually gives us the ground state energy of that molecule. Like I said before, the variational quantum eigensolver is actually a quantum machine learning algorithm, which means that it has both a quantum and classical part. Now the quantum part is where the exciting stuff happens. First what we want to do is map the molecular Hamiltonian into a qubit Hamiltonian. This essentially means that we're mapping the electron orbital interactions inside the molecules onto our qubits to be able to perform calculations with them. Next what we want to do is prepare the ansatz. We want our ansatz to be shallow, but we want it to cover a good enough range for our trial wave functions. And so, since we don't know what our ground state energy is, we want to start preparing some trial wave functions to calculate with. After this, we want to calculate the ground state energy of that particular trial wave function. We do this with the information given by a specific Hamiltonian at a given interatomic distance, and then we want to calculate the energy of that electron configuration. After we have all the quantum stuff done, we want to measure those values and send it through to the classical optimizer. During this part, we want to minimize our parameters so we get a lower and lower expectation value. After this, we feed all these values back into the quantum part and reiterate. See, we want to run this loop a bunch of times until it converges onto the lowest possible energy state for that interatomic distance. So following all these steps, I was actually able to find the ground state energy of lithium hydride. So to reiterate, first what we want to do is map the molecular Hamiltonian into a qubit Hamiltonian. Then we want to prepare the onsets and run calculations with our trial wave function. Next we send it off to the classical optimizer to minimize the expectation value and we reiterate through this loop a bunch of times. And voila! Six hours of running later we get the ground state energy of our molecule. And there you have it! That's a variational quantum eigensolver in a nutshell. Anyways, I really hope you learned something. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like down below. Stay tuned for more quantum content in the future. Bye for now.